in this video we are going to talk about continuity of a function let me define the continuous of a function f of x at x equal to e a function f of x is said to be continuous at x equal to e then it satisfies the following three conditions condition number one f of a is defined condition number two limit x approaches a f of a should be exist condition number three limit x approaches a f of x value should be equal to f of a value let us see one example we have a function and we have to check the function is continuous at x equal to 3 so we start from condition number one what is condition number one the function f at the point a should be defined so here the point is 3 so let me replace x equal to 3 in the function as you see we have two functions given so since the function at x equal to 3 we have to consider the first segment that is x less than or equal to 3 so here i have to replace the function value by 3 so that will give you minus 5 then we have the second condition limit should be exist that means i need to find the left handed limit and the right handed limit so we found that let left handed limit equal to minus 5 and right handed limit as 4 for the left handed limit we should take the first function this one for right handed limit we should take the second one this one 4x minus 8 so since both limits are not equal we declare that the limit does not exist since the limit does not exist we have concluded that the function is not continuous at x equal to 3 let us see the second example so in the same way how we approach problem number one the same idea we are going to follow here so first let me calculate f of 3 so now the equal to symbol is here so i have to take the second segment to calculate the f of value at 3 so they will give you 7 then condition number 2 we have to check the left hand limit and right hand limit for left hand limit we have to take this function and for right hand limit we have to take this function and we have concluded that left hand limit value equal to 7 right hand limit value equal to 7 since both are equal we declare that limit also exists now what is my third condition my third condition is the limit value should be equal to f of a value so it is very clear that the limit value is 3 function at the point 3 also equal to 3 so all the three conditions satisfied so i can say the function f of x is continuous at x equal to 3 Question number three we have to calculate the value of a so that the function f of x equal to x square plus 2x x less than 2 3x minus 2a x greater than or equal to 2 is continuous at every x so since in the problem itself they have given the function is continuous we start the problem by assuming the limit the left handed limit is equal to the right handed limit then we have calculated the left handed limit value we have calculated the right handed limit value and then I am equating both limit value. So I am writing 6 minus 2a equal to 8. By simplifying this equation, we will get a equal to minus 1. Another example, we have a function. We need to find the value of k. So as I told you in example number 3, here also we have to begin the problem by assuming the limit, left under limit, is equal to right under limit by assuming that the function is the function have a limit because they given the function is continuous at every x okay so we have to calculate one from the left side one from the right side and then i'm equating the value 3 equal to k minus 1 if i simplify i will get k equal to 4. there is an important note in any problem if a polynomial function is given or rational function is given then both functions are continuous at every point in their domain so this is true for all polynomial function and rational function let us see one example using the definition determine whether the function f of x equal to x squared minus 9 divided by x minus 3 is continuous at x equal to 3 justify your conclusion so it's very simple by substituting the value x equal to 3 in the function 
it is very clear that we have a value like 0 by 0. So since this is undefined, I can say that the function f of x is not continuous at x equal to 3. Or I can say the function f of x is discontinuous at x equal to 3. The next question, for what values of x is the function f of x is given x plus 1 over x minus 4 is continuous. By seeing the denominator, it is very clear that if I replace x equal to 4 here, I will get 4 minus 4 equal to 0 in the denominator. So I can say the function is a rational function. From the note, I can conclude that the function is continuous every value of x but except the value x equal to 4 because if I substitute x equal to 4 here, then 4 minus 4 equal to 0 in the denominator. So except x equal to 4, the given rational function is continuous everywhere. Determine the graph given below is continuous at x equal to 2. Now this concept comes under the continuity using a graph. So we have a graph given. Using the graph, we have to check the continuity of the function. Since the question is involving the limit is continuous, the function is continuous at x equal to minus 2. Uh, as we discussed before, we need to check the three conditions. What is condition number 1? Condition number 1 is f of a is defined. Here a equal to minus 2. So f of minus 2. What is f of minus 2 here? If you see minus 2, minus 2 is here. If I go up, there is a dark circle. What is the corresponding y value here? Y value is 2. So I say f of minus 2 equal to 2. Then as per our second condition, we have to check limit from the left and limit from the right. So it is very clear that limit from left equal to 2 and limit from right equal to minus 1. Since both are not equal, we say the limit for the given function does not exist. Since limit does not exist, we can conclude that the function is not continuous at the given point x equal to minus 2. Now we'll discuss about limit involving infinity. Sometimes the given problem has x approaching infinity or x approaching minus infinity. So there are four basic rules we have to remember. These are the rules. Okay. And we can um, solve the problems by very easily by using the definition or the method called principle of dominance. There are three conditions. This is condition number one. Limit x approaches infinity a times x power a in the numerator and b times x power b in the denominator. Then what I do? I have to check the degree of the numerator. Then I have to check the degree of the denominator. What is degree? The highest power in the function. Okay. Since both the degree in the numerator and degree in the denominator is equal, I can conclude that the limit of the function is a divided by b. What is a? a is the coefficient before the highest power b is the coefficient before the highest power in the denominator. And case number 2, limit x approaches infinity, a x to the power a divided by b x to the power b. Then if the degree of the numerator is small and degree of the numerator is big, or I can say degree of the numerator is less than degree of the denominator. In this case, we simply declare the limit value of the function is 0. Case number 3, sometimes the numerator is a bigger value than the denominator. Then what I do? I can conclude that the limit may be infinity or minus infinity. So how we say is it infinity or minus infinity? These answers depending on the simplified ratio of the function. Let us discuss one problem, then we will understand everything. The same rule can be applicable for limit x approaches minus infinity as well. So the principle of dominance can be applied for limit x approaches infinity and limit x up approaches minus infinity. See this example. Compute each of the following limits. Question number one, limit x approaches infinity 2 times x to the power 4. So what I do, I can write 2 bracket my infinity and what is the power here? 4. So in infinity is a bigger number, very big number. If I take the power up to 4, it is a very big number. Then I multiply with 2. So that will give you a very, very big number. So I can conclude that the limit equal to infinity. Question number 2, we have given minus infinity. So if I substitute minus infinity, we have 2 times minus infinity to the power 4. Since we know that 2 times minus infinity power 4 equal to infinity, then I multiply with 2. 
So I will get again a very big number which is infinity. Same idea for question number 3 and question number 4. In question number 5, we can divide this into 3 segments, minus 3x power 3, plus 2 and minus 3 over x. In the last segment, 3 over x, if I, if I apply x equal to infinity, this term gets cancelled. Then we have only remaining two terms. So what is the first term? Minus 3x power 3. What is x value? x value is infinity. So infinity to the power 3 plus 2. So infinity power 3, this will give you infinity. Infinity times minus infinity, that will give you minus infinity. Minus infinity plus 2, this is also equal to minus infinity. Okay. In question number 6, 7 and 8, we are going to use the principle of dominance. As I told you, if I apply principles of dominance, we have to look for the highest degree in the numerator. So here, the highest degree in the numerator is 3. What is the denominator degree? The highest degree is 3. Okay. So since both are equal, we have concluded the limit is A divided by B. What is A? A is the coefficient and the highest the degree highest degree coefficient so here a equal to the number minus 2 divided by b what is b the coefficient of b is 1 so we have concluded that minus 2 divided by 1 so i can say the value is minus 2 number 7 the highest degree in the numerator is 3 the highest degree in the denominator is 4 since numerator is lesser degree than the denominator we have concluded that limit equal to 0 last case limit x approaches minus infinity so if you see here we are looking for only the highest power in the numerator so i have 2x power 4 in the denominator there will be only one term x to the power 3 so if i cancel x power 3 up and down we have left with minus 2x so minus 2 then i replace x value by minus infinity so minus 2 times minus infinity so that will give you plus infinity. In case of a polynomial, remember that the limit at x equal to infinity or x equal to minus infinity can be determined by its leading term. What is leading term? Leading term means the term which has the highest power. See the example. Compute each of the following limits. So this is a polynomial in question number one. So as I told you, it the limit can be determined only by taking the leading term so here the leading, leading term is minus x power 5 minus 2 x power 5 so don't worry about the remaining term just cancel the remaining terms we have left with only minus 2 x power 5 if i substitute x equal to infinity we will get minus infinity question number two again cancel all the lowest terms just to focus the leading term in the leading term if i replace x equal to minus infinity I will get plus infinity. The last question, we have x power 5 and x power 6. So this is lowest term, cancel the lowest term. This is the highest power, x power 6. So here in place of x, if I substitute minus infinity, I will get infinity. So a polynomial, the limit can be determined only by taking its leading term. Then we are going to apply the concepts called asymptotes. There are two kinds of asymptotes. One is vertical asymptote and another one is horizontal asymptote. So this is the this is the definition of horizontal asymptote and vertical asymptotes. To find the horizontal the vertical asymptote, there are three steps. Let us see one example. So we have a function. I need to find vertical asymptotes. I have to first factor the denominator x minus 3, x minus 1 then i have to equate to 0 so i will get x equal to 3 and x equal to 1 and we can draw the horizontal asymptote by writing by uh, making a horizontal vertical line in x equal to 1 and x equal to 3. for horizontal asymptotes as usual we can apply like uh, the method i said before degree of the numerator and degree of the denominator if both are equal the horizontal asymptote is nothing but the ratio of the leading coefficient if the degree of the numerator is small degree of the denominator is big then we say that the horizontal asymptote is y equal to 0 if the degree of the numerator is big degree of the denominator is small then there is no horizontal asymptotes then we have given some exercise problems try yourself see you in the next